our masked youth service today. I hope you had a really good Easter and have been enjoying the school holidays. Well, today we're going to be thinking a bit about Thomas and his reaction to hearing about the risen Jesus and seeing him for himself. And as we start, we're going to do a quiz um, about some really unusual facts that are very doubtful of whether they're true. But can you tell which ones are the true ones? The letter A is not in any number from 1 to 999. It's doubtful, but it is true. Cookie Monster's real name is Sid. Doubtful, but it is true. Bulls get angry when they see red. Doubtful, because it's false. You swallow eight spiders a year in your sleep. Doubtful, because it's false. Bats are blind. Doubtful, because it's false. Octopus blood is blue. Doubtful, but it is true. More people are killed by coconuts than sharks each year. Doubtful, but it is true. You'll get cramp if you swim straight after you've eaten. Doubtful, because it's false. I wonder how many of our quiz questions you managed to get right. And as we continue this morning, we're going to sing a song. We're going to worship God through music. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Jesus, a name above every other name Jesus, the only one that could ever say You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring 
Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Jesus, a name above every other name Jesus, the only one I could ever see Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder And show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love to those around me And I will build my life upon your love It is a firm foundation And I will put my trust in you alone And I will not be shaken no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me and hold there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder And show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love to those I hope you were able to join in with that in whatever way works for you. We're now going to have our reading, but we're going to have it in a really different way today. We're going to, going to interview Thomas and see what this whole story was about from his perspective. John chapter 20 verses 19 to 29. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, 
Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. I wanted to know, that's all, to see for myself if it could be possibly true. Was that so awful? Remember, we'd all doubted at first, when the women came back that morning, dismissing their story of the empty tune as so much nonsense. So why point the finger at me, as though I questioned and they didn't? All right, the situation had changed since then, I accept that. For they all claimed to have seen him in the meantime. And not just them, but others. Each adamant the Lord had ris risen. Yet, as much as I wanted to believe it, I simply couldn't. Not unless the proof was spelt out for me in black and white. That was me all over, I'm afraid. The way I had been since a boy, struggling to accept anything I couldn't touch for myself or see with my own eyes. And I'd said as much to Jesus before he died. That day he spoke about his father's house and is going there to prepare a place for us. Believe in God, he said. Believe in me also. A wonderful promise, yes. Only to me, he was talking in riddles. And I made no bones about it. Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? He wasn't angry with me, though he could have been. For after all that time, all he'd said, I should have known. Just as I should have understood. He would rise from the tomb and return among us. He'd spoken of it often enough, done as best to prepare us not simply for his death, but for his resurrection to follow. But as so often happens, we dwell on the bad and forget the good, unable to see beyond the demands of the present moment. So despite it all, I refuse to believe convinced there was still too many questions and not enough answers. And I'd been doing that still, still wondering if it ever could be, but for his grace. For suddenly he was there again, standing amongst us, arms stretched out in welcome, those pierced hands reaching out to me, Thomas, and I knew I'd been wrong. He was alive, just as he'd said, risen victorious, and I knelt down in worship, my heart overflowing with thanksgiving, for he'd come, despite me, despite my lack of faith. Though I had doubted him, still he believed in me. that was really great to hear directly from Thomas of his perspective of what happened um, when he met the risen Christ. If I'm honest, I think Thomas gets a bit of a bad rap in the Bible. We barely know anything about him and this is really the only story where he is kind of separated and identified as an individual rather than just one of the disciples. And because of that, he is forever known as Doubting Thomas. With all of the negative associations that kind of come from that word of doubting. But sometimes it can be okay to doubt. And if, because if we never doubt, we don't really know what we believe in. 
and we don't actually think for ourselves and instead go along with the crowd following where they go shouting what they shout and without thinking do follow their actions as well as we saw with the crowds on Good Friday. I remember being in sixth form once and someone asking me to sign a petition and to be honest I was quite new in the school and I didn't read it properly I kind of wanted to fit in and so I just signed it and didn't really yeah read it or register what I was signing. Later on talking with some other people they told me more what it was about and I had to go the next day and find the people who had the petition and ask them if they could um, take my name off this particular petition because it wasn't something that I actually agreed with or believed in. And to be honest it was much more embarrassing having to take my name off the petition than if I just read it correctly and said no in the first place. And in the same school, I remember sitting at a maths lesson, um, we were doing statistics and we were copying some methodology off the board and halfway through a sentence, I suddenly realised that I was writing about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And I looked up and my teacher just smiled at me and kind of indicated for me to quietly wait for the others to register as well. And he went on to talk to us about the fact that we shouldn't just be copying off the board blindly and not registering what it was that we were writing. When we question the things around us, um, when we doubt and show suspicion or scepticism, actually we're challenging our own preconceived ideas about truth. And through this, we're able to come to believe on our own believe because of our experiences and our relationships and not because we've blindly followed our peers, our friends, our parents and our youth workers without understanding things for ourselves. Being in a relationship with Jesus is a completely personal decision. Others might wish and hope and pray for us to come into relationship with God but it has to be our choice. There is no second generation in God's family. We are all his children. We might not have all of the facts either, and we have to have faith and trust in part. But like Thomas, when he first saw the risen Jesus, we can come to a full understanding of who Jesus is and like Thomas's reaction, be able to say, my Lord and my God, for ourselves with full confidence of who he is. I want to challenge you over this next week or two to really question you for yourselves who it is that you believe that Jesus is. Is he who he said he is? Did he really die and rise again? And if he did, and he is who he says he is, what does that mean for you personally? And you might want to talk about that with your parents or your youth worker or your minister or with some friends. But really, really challenge yourself. Question, do you actually believe it? And if you do believe it, how is that going to change everything that you do from this point forward? Just like it did for Thomas. We're going to hand over to Linda now as she leads us in a time of prayer, a time of talking with God, of continuing being in that relationship with him. He wants to know us, he wants to talk to us and we can do that by praying to him wherever we are and whatever we're feeling. This week, our prayers are based on John's account of Jesus appearing to his disciples. Lord, we thank you that when we are afraid, you offer us your peace. I pray that we are able to give our fears to you. Anything that's unsettling us at the moment, any danger, whether real or imagined, visible or invisible, we give these to you now. 
We thank you that you are greater than anything we are afraid of. And we ask for your help to leave our fears with you and to trust that you face all of our fears alongside us. We pray that your peace will stay with us and that we are able to bring your peace to others who need it. Lord, we thank you that you are patient with us when we doubt. We thank you that when you rose and appeared to your disciples, you allowed them to examine the holes in your hands and side. And that in the same way, you reassure us of the truth when we earnestly seek you. We pray that you would give us faith to come to you for answers when we doubt, and faith to live our lives in the knowledge that Jesus is alive. Lord, we thank you for the joy of knowing you. Help us to see where you're at work in our lives and to celebrate all that you do. In Jesus' name, Amen. It's been great spending time with you today thinking about Thomas and the disciples and whether it's okay for us to have doubts sometimes too. So I'm just going to pray as we finish this morning. Lord God, we thank you that you are are bigger than our doubts, that you can handle our questioning and that you want us to come to know you for ourselves and come into real relationship with you. Just pray as we go today that you help us to do that, you help us to know you for ourselves. In Jesus name, Amen.